Wow, you know, it's going to be hard to not get the big head after what happened this morning. What an awesome honor and privilege to, to be able to receive a plaque like that. And I can't keep from crying. But, you know, I had a prominent doctor. I'm a nurse, and I worked with a lot of doctors through the years. And I had a prominent doctor tell me one time, he said, you know how to keep your head from swelling? Your eyes have to leak a lot. And I think sometimes that will help keep us humble, would not it? <laughs> but I do thank the Lord and I thank you all for this privilege of being able to share this morning just a little bit of boasting on the Lord this morning because he is awesome and he's worthy to be praised. Uh, and they did most of my introduction. I was just going to tell you a little bit about us, and so you all already know a lot about us, and we've spoken here so many times, and we have our sweet family that goes here, and, and I just thank the Lord so much for this church family and for Pastor John giving us this opportunity to tell you a little bit how the Lord is at work in Venezuela and all over the world. You know, uh, the girls mentioned in their uh, drama the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. And uh, we're so grateful for the churches that take up the Lottie Moon Christmas offering and give to the cooperative program because that money has allowed us to be able to be the ambassadors of Christ. Um, those offerings that you give, that we give, um, supports about 4,200 missionaries through the International Mission Board that are serving all over the world. So therein lies a little problem. Um, we went back to the mission field on August the 27th. Excuse me, August 26th, late in the day. The reason that's important is because early on August the 27th, there was an announcement made by the International Mission Board. If we had been here one more day, this would not have in any way applied to us. Basically, we would have just been let go uh, because the money that they get through the Lottie Mission off Christmas Offering and Cooperative Program and all the, the ways they gather money for missions will only support about 4,200 missionaries. Well, we have over 5,000 missionaries, and so they ask us, everyone across the board, to pray um, to know for sure, to seek the Lord, to fast and pray, and to know that God still wants us where we are, serving in Venezuela for us at that time. And we were so surprised. We, had, we were shocked. We had no idea that was coming. And so we spent 40 days basically just praying, not fasting all that time, <laughs> but praying and seeking the Lord. And we were again surprised when the Lord clarified to us in many ways and confirmed it that it was time for us uh, to transition. So we came back here in December, and uh, we don't really know what the next step is. We know that our hearts for missions, we know that we love doing missions, and so we're, we're just open. We're just laying it all out there like what the, the president of the IMB, David Platt, kept saying, just give us a blank check. Give the Lord a blank check. Not us, but the Lord. <laughs> a blank check. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, I'm sure they would like that, too, if you'd like to give a blank check. <laughs> no. Um, we did grow up here. James went to Dobbins Bennett High School, but don't hold that against him. We went and spoke at a church in Madisonville, Tennessee, last week. And she talked to him for two minutes on the phone. Before we got there, she invited us to come to her home uh, for lunch and to spend the afternoon with them, just like Sharon and Jimmy Hurd invited us this Sunday to come spend the day with them at their home, and she's going to feed us. And uh, Sharon's my beautiful sister, and <laughs> her beautiful daughters and sons-in-laws, and that family's just been a huge part of our ministry, just like this Ridgeview family has. And so we're so grateful. But she said to James, I know where you went to high school. You went to Dobbins Bennett high school and <laughs> so that's all she said and so we went on after lunch I said I, I'm curious about she said I thought y'all might ask about that she said well I don't know quite how to put it we won't go there anyway uh, <laughs> we both graduated from ETSU and so uh, I'm a registered nurse James got several degrees and then went on to seminary 
We were in seminary for three years. We actually left here 25 years ago to go on this journey with the Lord. And it's been awesome. I can tell you for sure that we never expected all that's happened and never thought that the Lord could use someone like us. But he's so faithful. And he's so good. <laughs> and he likes you using weak vessels because then he gets the glory. But you know what? <coughs> We went to Costa Rica for a year to learn Spanish. And then we went on to Venezuela, and we've been there almost 20 years. <coughs> Our kids grew up, up there. Um, I don't know if Holly, maybe Luke, Luke and Mary are here this morning. We have three kids, and so they grew up there. But it was always fun to get to bring them back here and, and uh, get to, to let them go to school here some because I homeschooled there. But it's all just a blur in a way. Well, sometimes we look at it and we think, how in the world, what were we thinking? How did we do that? How did we do that? We had a home, we had cars, we had, you know, jobs. I worked at Wellmont for 14 years and James had, had a good job and we were just thinking about it back over. You know, when you make a transition, you think about what all has transpired. And so just to be brief, I just want to say it is all a blur, but one thing stood out these last 25 years is that Jesus Christ is worthy. He's faithful and he keeps all his promises. His word is true. It is true. It's truth. It's the only truth. And you know what? Many years ago, the Lord laid a psalm on my heart and I just went ahead and memorized this psalm because it meant so much to me at the time. This was years ago. But I'd just like to share it with you because what we've seen is this psalm in action. I will exalt you, my God the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. For great are you, Lord, and most worthy of praise. Your greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works. And I will proclaim your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord's good to all he has made. All you have made will praise you, O Lord. Your saints will extol you. They will tell the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might so that all men may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is faithful to all his promises and loving toward all he has made. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and you satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving toward all he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. The Lord watches over all those who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Bless his holy name. Well, that's all we got for today. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we're, we're, we are glad to be here. It's a, it was a surprise. I don't know why the kids didn't come and hug me, but I was wondering, you know. But uh, we, are, we are glad to be here. We... And I'm not John either, so we we are glad to be here. Um, we spent, like you said, we spent the last 20 years in Venezuela. When we got, first got to Venezuela, we went we we started working in a little town called Valera. It's called the floor mat of the Indies. So I lived in a little town called the floor mat. So the, you know it's called Valera. So from Valera, you started up the mountains, which at one point, it gets up to 13,300 feet. So you can drive and drive and drive. So we lived in a little town called that. In this time, 
we got there, we, we took the place of a family that's been there 40 years, the Kimblers. So the first Sunday that we got there, they took us to the church, which is in La Puerta, which is built by Americans. And so we're at the church, and I'm standing there, and we're up front, and they're introducing us and everything. I'm just looking around, not paying no attention to what they're saying, and looking, and just looking at the, it's really, a, really a beautiful little church up in the Andes. So Penny looked at me, she said, you know what they're saying, don't you? And I said, no, I don't pay much attention. She said, they just made you pastor of this church. And I said, oh. I said, well, thank you. So I was pastor of a church that we'd only been there about uh, probably a couple of months. We, we stayed in Caracas for a while, and then we came there. And they made me pastor of the church, and I couldn't hardly speak. You know, I, I, was, I learned Spanish, but I couldn't hardly speak it, and we, you know, but that's the way to learn it. You know, you have to get out there and talk. And so we, we went to that little town. In the mostly in the Andes Mountains are Latino, or they're Spanish Latinos, and they're Span they're, they speak Spanish. But probably in some of the towns in the Andes Mountains, most of the, in the people there are 100% Catholic. And when you when I walked around the little town of of La Puerta. I would ask people, who is Jesus? And we would, they would say, well, we know who Jesus was. He's the one that died on the cross for our sins. He's the one that was uh, resurrected in three days. And he, you know, he's beside, you know, he's beside the Father and he's the Son of God. And that's right. We said, yeah, that's right. He is. But most of the people in the Andes Mountains knew facts about who Jesus was but they didn't have no relationship with who Jesus was. It's, it's important, when we went to work with the, Indian, I mean, the people in the Andes, that we were there to tell them about who Jesus was, and that he is there to save them from their sins, and that he did die on the cross, and he did, the facts are right, but they did not have a relationship with him. Jesus was, you know, a lot of people in, in, in Andy's Mountains, their name, you know, a lot of Jesus. A lot of people are Jesus. And some, you know, they just didn't know Jesus. But, you know, I don't know, you know, I know some facts about Abraham Lincoln. I looked in the book, I know about Abraham Lincoln, and I know what, what he did for America. And I knew the facts about Abraham Lincoln. But, I did not know him personally, and I didn't have a relationship with him or anything like that. And, you know, I know Peyton Manning. You know, I know Peyton Manning because, you know, I love football. You know, I grew up playing football all my life. And, you know, I know Peyton Manning, and I knew facts about Peyton Manning. But I didn't know, you know, uh, I didn't have no relationship with Peyton Manning, and I did not know him. It's a difference knowing, knowing the stories of Jesus, of the life of Christ, and not knowing you know, having a personal relationship with Him as our Savior and Lord. The Word, the, the word of God tells us in 1 James chapter 2, verse 19, you believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23, and let's turn to that. In Matthew 7, 21 through 23. It says... Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of the Father in heaven. In heaven. Who, what is the will of God? You know, in the Old Testament, in Genesis and Exodus and Leviticus, and all these, it talks about, you know, the, the Israelites leaving Egypt and going to the promised land and have to go through the desert for 40 years and all that. But a lot of times in that, what did God say? I do this because I want them to know that I am the Lord, that I am God. And I believe that's what he wants with us. He wants us to know 
that he is God and that he is Lord of our lives. There's a, there's a difference between, between believing something and being willing to put your life on him. You know, okay, for example, you know the Andes Mountains. The Andes Mountains. You got a picture of the Andes Mountains? Okay. There's the Andes Mountains. And then there's a picture of, I mean, uh, the falls, or the Angel Falls. Okay, there, for example, a man came to Angel Falls, and he took a big rope, and he tied one end to one side of the fall, and he went all tied another rope to the other side on the trees. And he took a big pole, he got up on the rope, and he told the people, do you believe that I can walk across through there? And when people say, well, I don't know. I don't, you know, people come around, they're looking. I don't know. Someone said, he's crazy, you know. I mean, it's, it's a big, a high mountain, and this is about 13,000 feet too. And they're, they're going, well, I don't believe him. So he gets up there, and he walks across the rope to one side, and he walks it back, back. And he said, do you believe me now? And they said, oh, yeah, we see, yeah, we see that you do it. He said, okay, what if I do this? I take a wheelbarrow and get up here and walk across with the wheelbarrow. Do you believe I can do that? And a lot of people go, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think so. Maybe. So he gets up there and he walks across with a wheelbarrow and he comes back. And everybody's like, wow, how would you do that? And then he gets up and he, he says, I'll put, what, do you believe that I can walk across here with 200 pounds of sand in the wheelbarrow? And go over and come back. And they go, well, I don't know. Yeah, you did good. So he gets up and he walks across with a wheelbarrow and he comes back. And then he says, okay, do you believe that I can take a person across in the wheelbarrow and get to one side and come back? And they said, yeah, we believe you can do that. And he says, I need a volunteer. <laughs> so the people go, well, no, I'm not going to volunteer to do that. I mean, I'm going to get killed or something like that. So, you know, they... They believe that he can do it, but they don't have no faith in him. And that's a lot of things that we do. We believe in Jesus Christ. A lot of times we don't have no faith in what he can do for us and who he really is. In um, Matthew, you know, we, we say, a lot of people say, you know, he is the Son of God. But in Matthew 16, 16, it says, hey, Peter said, you say, who do you think I am? And he said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. The, the name of Jesus literally means Emmanuel. We know that. But it means salvation. When, I was in, when Penny and I had an opportunity to go to Israel, when we was in Israel, so the pastor of the church, big church that we went with had several other pastors with them, and they wanted me because, you know, I was, you know, I was ordained, and they said, we're going to go to the welling wall, and we're going to pray for you. So they get me to the welling wall, and they put the, you know, they say, I want you to put these little things in the wall of people's prayers. So I did that, and they said, we want to pray for each one of you, the pastors. So we sat down, and then I was the last one. So I'm sitting down, and he said, in the name of Jesus, and he was just hollering the name of Jesus out. And all of a sudden, I felt real funny. And I looked up, and I saw about 200 people rounded around about it. And they had these little black hats on, these little curly things right there. And I went, so what's happening? So they were very, very, very upset because he was saying the name of Jesus. He said that was blasphemy. That's, he was, that Jesus wasn't the Messiah. That he wasn't the Son of God. And they were hollering at it and screaming. They were, they were very upset. And the women were very upset. And they ran up there and got the guards. And the guards ran down there and escorted us out. And I'm sitting there going, whoa. We, can, we almost had a fight here. Oh, boy. But the name of Jesus changes, changes things. His name is, is this great. In Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other. Any other who? None, no salvation in any other except for Jesus Christ. Therefore, I mean, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. 
And the only way to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And the gift of God is eternal life through who? Not through anybody but Jesus Christ. And that's how we know. It's not enough to know the facts about Jesus or know he loves you. Faith is putting your confidence in him and your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and Accept him as your savior and be saved. We must surrender to Jesus Christ as Lord. And that's where we came from the Andes. I mean, from the Andes, we moved all the way across to the other side of Venezuela. We packed our kids up and we packed, we had uh, in our car, in our Bronco, we had Holly, Ashley and Luke, Penny and me, a, uh, a cat, uh, a boxer, three iguanas, three turtles, and partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> so we had all that, and we're, saying, we're, we're going across there, and we look like, you know, the, the, the Latino uh, Beverly Hillbillies going across the country there. We get to the other side of Venezuela, and we pray, we've been praying for a long time. We say, God, we want you to be in this. And we knew that he was, but we like, you know, people like signs. And as we're driving, it got to a place where there's just flat land. And all you can you see for miles, the rain coming down or anything like that. You see for miles and miles just, and lightning. And we came up on a rainbow. I mean a rainbow. And then five minutes later, we went on down, we come to another rainbow. And then about ten minutes later, we came down to another rainbow. And we know that it was God telling us, I am going to take care of you. I'll never leave you or forsake you. We're going to, I'm going to be with you every step of the way with the White Owl Indians. So we get to the other part of the, from the Andes to the White Owl Indians, and we find out practically the same thing of what happened in the Andes Mountains. We found out that people knew the facts about Jesus Christ, but they never did have a relationship with him. So we, we get with the Indians, we get to start, uh, you know, uh, preaching to them and, 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 and Bible studying with them and, and showing them at Je you know, about Jesus and who he is. And that time, people started to come know, know him as their Savior. And God just opened the floodgates and people started getting saved. And through the Indians, they started getting baptized. And like I told you, you know, about baptize, I, baptism, I'm the, I, do the, I'm the, I do the fastest baptism in the world. And when I get in the water, you know, my legs are white. There's something going to eat my legs, you know. It's a, it's a piranhas or whatever fish in there, and they nibble on you. So I'd say, in Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and I'm out of there, and, you know, about uh, 200 white owl. No, I'm just saying. But I, I've, I've uh, baptized the most white owl in five minutes. <laughs> but God has really blessed us. And he has taken care of us. And he has watched over us. You know, in Colossians 1, 5, uh, 15 through 17, it says, tells us that Jesus is the Son of God, who is creator and sustainer of all that exists. You know, in, in, in the Great Commission, what does it say in the Great Commission? It says, in the Great Commission, it says, all power has been given unto me, and that's why I follow this Lord in Jesus Christ because he said, I'll never leave your sake. And I have all power in heaven and in earth. And he's the one that made the heavens and the earth and everything in them. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we have all three of them. And in Psalms 103, 19 tells us, God is sovereign who governs and reigns over all things at all times. And nothing escapes his attention. He is all knowing. He is all omnipresent. He is everywhere. He is God. Jesus Christ is God. And he is my Savior. John 14, 17, 18 tells us that Jesus took human form as a man. During his life, a baby, and he was raised into a man. During his life on, uh, here on earth, and then sent, then he sent the Holy Spirit to be our comforter. 
in his place when we when he ascended to the Father who is in heaven. And Hebrews four, fifteen through sixteen says, He is our high priest and knows all our weaknesses and temptations. And he provides grace and mercy in our time of need. Jesus, do you know him? Do you just know the facts about him? Or do you care about knowing him? He is the way, the truth, and the life. And in 1 John 2.6 says, Jesus is the Lamb of God. He's the one that shed his blood. He got up on the cross and he shed his blood for our sins that we would be saved. And he's the perfect sacrifice because he was pure. And his blood spilled on the cross to provide a way for us to be forgiven. And do you know him? Do you know Jesus? You remember when I said about this, this, the, the demons knowing him and they tremble? You remember the story I told you about the pig? I remember the pig story. Not many. But uh, I'll tell it. I don't care. When we when we was up in the Andes, you know, I mean, with the with the Wadi Al, they they have houses, still houses, and in the houses, you know, they don't have walls or anything. You just sleep on, you know, hammocks and stuff like that. And they make their own hammocks, they make their own baskets, and they sell them for for uh, for food and and uh, they fish for a living. But I get in there, and they don't have they don't have lights. They, don't, they have to you have to take a generator in there. When you take the generator, in, you have to set up your. I have to set up my table and my my projector and all that. And I'm getting it all ready. And I get it all my wires there. You have to take a live wire and put hook it up on another wire, live wire. And I don't do that. I let the one of them Indians do it because you know they they're fast and they're they're little. And so they they can put it up there. And we get the movie running. And in the movie, you know. Um, I'm standing there talking to the pastor, and I have my arm around him. He's just a little bitty dude, about this high, and we're talking, and all of a sudden, this pig walks in, gets underneath my table, and starts chewing on the wires. And when he, and then I said, I told the pastor, I said, Pastor, get that pig. He said, said, Tiago, it's not my pig. I said, go ahead and get it. He said, they won't say that. He said, yeah, they, they'll get upset. I said, well, I'm going to get more upset if, the, if he gets fried. And uh, we, you know, uh, we... Um, we lose our attention. And he goes, well, it's not my pig. And all of a sudden, you know, in, in the movie, where they're casting the, the demons out of the, the, the men into the swine, and they were getting ready to run over the cliff, that little pig, they, you know, the pigs in the movie started squealing, the little pig started squealing. He started running around in circles. And then he runs out into the darkness, and all of a sudden people come in, and they get saved. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, I said, well, you know, if they can, they can use a little pig, they can use... You, <laughs> so he, I, uh, you know, I used to carry around a little pink pig with me all the time, but um, I, I don't do that anymore. But they tremble; they're scared, and they said, "Just throw us! Don't throw us into the abyss. Put us into the pigs." And they went into the cliff, and the pigs died. And I've seen many. I've seen many witch doctors, and I've seen many people possessed. But Jesus talks about that in the New Testament. I mean, in the in the New Testament about in the little towns that he's went into, all the people who are possessed and who who are got demons in them, and he casts them out by just saying the word, and he heals them, and he 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 heals the blind, he heals the people who have a wilted hand, and the people and people get saved through his ministry. That's who Jesus is. It's not facts about him. It's the truth about him. And that's who Jesus Christ is. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is my Savior. I don't know what God's got for us, me and Penny, but I know he's got something wonderful. And I know he's going to open the doors, and I know that he's going to bring in blessings. And Jesus is Lord.
James um, gave me a quick opportunity to share just a, a, a story that happened to us uh, while we were, it's a true story, that happened to us when we first got in Costa Rica. And um, it's about a gift. And uh, we, I don't know if Luke remembers this, he was only five, four or five, or maybe three, no, four or five. Anyway, we were going to, we were blessed because in Costa Rica we didn't get to have a car. But we were blessed because they built a new grocery store right down the road from where we lived. Well, the day they opened, they had a big mariachi band, which mariachi bands are actually from Mexico, but they had one. <laughs> and they had a, the radio station there live. Well, the, when we, me and my three kids walked up, James wasn't with us, I went to the grocery store, and I was so excited because I, this was close. It, was, it wasn't a very far walk, just a few blocks. And so, of course, they noticed us walking in because both my girls were blonde and I'm blonde and that's unusual to see blondes. So they noticed us walking up and they ran over with the microphone and he had a microphone and he was live on the radio and he started talking to me, blah, 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 blah. And I could not understand what he was saying. But I'd been warned that if somebody tries to hand you something, be careful in Latin America because a lot of times they'll hand you something and then they won't take it back and they want you to buy it. And it just gets really awkward to where you're just better off not to take anything from anybody. And sometimes things are laced with drugs. So you have to be careful about taking things when you're in a foreign country from a stranger. So he kept trying to hand me this really nice gift. And I said, uh, no, gracias. And I tried to not make eye contact and just leave, you know, quietly. But he wouldn't let me. He followed me with the microphone. He was like, la, 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 you know, and talking and talking and live on the radio. And then he would put the microphone in front of my face. And I said, no, gracias. And he still kept following me. Followed me almost into the grocery store. And I was trying to get the kid, you know, come on, kids, let's get out of here. And so... I uh, got away from him, stayed in the grocery store forever because I was thinking maybe they'll leave, got out of the grocery store and they were still there. He saw me come out of the grocery store and he must have asked somebody how to say this. He ran up to me and he said, it's free. <laughs> and I said, oh, gracias. And I took the gift. And that night though, you know what? I felt so terrible. I felt such conviction because I thought what a perfect opportunity for me to be on live on the radio telling people why I'm here. That I'm here to tell people. You know, imagine where you'd be this morning if nobody told you about Jesus. If nobody told you that God sent his son and that salvation is a free gift. <laughs> but you do have to receive it. What if you've never heard the name of Jesus? Many of the Waddell had never heard the name of Jesus. What if they never knew that God had this great, awesome gift for them, for eternal life? They never knew it. You know what? It's our responsibility to tell them. And you know what that did? You know a lot of times we have regrets. And I felt really convicted and terrible. And I said, Lord, I'm sorry that I wasn't the witness I should have been. <laughs> And that was the first of many times that I failed, so many times. But you know what? God is faithful. He's good. He's righteous. He's loving. He's kind. And he wants no man to perish. He wants everyone to know about Jesus and to know about the free gift of salvation so that they too can accept the gift. It's so important. It's, so, it's the most important decision you'll ever make in your life. God has a free gift for you. If you've never received it, today's the day of salvation.